Welcome to this course. My name is Gautam Kumawat and I am cyber security researcher. I help people in achieving their dreams. The key concept to be word class is the more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in war. I created this course to transform your life, to close the gap between where you are today and where you want to be. I had trained more than 50,000 plus police officers and engineers from big giant companies. I'm helping a lot of law enforcement agencies including Center Bureau of Investigation, Government of Rajasthan, Rajasthan Police, Ministry of Home Affairs, Defense Research and Development Organization, New York City Police Department, Department of Defense, Bureau of Research Police and Development, and Interpol. The key benefit of this course is its never-ending course. So finally, congratulate yourself because you have taken the first step to become a hacker today. Your time is now, so get started today. Hi, my name is Gautam Kumawat and thank you so much for choosing this amazing bug bounty hunting course. I am really excited to teach you about how you can become a successfully bug hunter and earn millions of dollars. In this video, I will tell you how exactly websites works. So let's explore it. So inside that we are going to talk about the web architecture and the flow, how HTTP protocol works, what are the HTTP response messages, what are the HTTP response code, which type of methods are used in the HTTP protocols. So all those things we are going to talk about in this section. So you daily surf internet, you daily browse Facebook, Gmail, Yahoo and other tons of social websites. Do you know exactly how your web browser is communicating with the web server? Every website have a unique name called domain name. It is also called as URL. So if I am typing facebook.com here, this is the called URL. Full form of the URL is Uniform Resource Locator and every URL start with either HTTP or HTTPS. Sometimes you will see that the every URL start with HTTPS nowadays. Because as you will have look over this facebook.com here, as you can see this is also started with the HTTPS. If you browse Gmail, it will start with the HTTPS. So this is the completely URL here. It is start with the protocol and after that this is the word by web domain name. So even you can purchase domain name from the GoDaddy or Big Rock website. And this is the directory and after that path name will come. And sometimes you will see that this is not the standard of this URL. Sometimes you will see that there is the port number is also written. So for example, I will write as port 8080 here. 80 is used for the HTTP. So maybe probably you will find out some of the website like as the local hot website with ending with the port 80 here. So that's how exactly it works. HTTP is the application protocol used to request the web server for the web pages, up script, applications, media, dynamic pages and HTTP is the responsible for the responding client request and to deliver the web page to the client browser. It is basically simple text based protocol. HTTP is the protocol for communication between client and the server. Suppose you want to access the Google website on your browser. So what you will do? You will type that URL on your browser here and your browser at the same time will generate a HTTP request including the domain name, path, method, directory, request file and send out the all type of details to the server. And after reading those details by the server, server will response back
with your desired file. So those file will contain HTML, JavaScript, some of the images, some of the CSS script. And everything will appear on your browser. So that's how this protocol work. It is basically a stateless protocol. So it doesn't manage any state. So this is the little bit history about HTTP protocol. It work on the request response mechanism. Sir Tim Bernali invented HTTP 0.9 in 1989. The latest version of HTTP is 1.1 and the upcoming version is 2.0. HTTP was never created for online banking, cloud computing. HTTP request methods are get, post, head, put, trace, delete and we are going to explore all these methods in our next video. HTTP is responsible for delivering hypermedia content to the cloud browser. HTTP port is 80 and 4434 HTTPS. It is protected by SSL or TSL for the secure communication. It is responsible for responding client request and deliver the web pages to the client. So as you can see, this is the web architecture and flow also known as client and server architecture. So as you can see, this is the web client or you can say our browser and this is the web server where our website is currently stored. So whenever user type down the any website in his browser and it is the same time their browser will generate a HTTP request and request is send it to the web server and after web server will get to know about that which type of request it is, which type of domain name that web client want to access, which type of path name he want to access, which type of directory he want to access, everything after knowing the details he will fetch the all detail from the database and after in the HTTP response he will deliver all the data requested by the web client in the response. So this is the client and server architecture. So as you can see the client request for resources on the server using URL and our browser generate request and send it to the server. And finally server will respond with the requested resources containing HTML, CSR, JavaScript files. Every request response was passed through a firewall or web application firewall between client side and server side. So this is the basically firewall here. So imagine you are using Google Chrome to access the localhost.com here. So when you type this localhost in your URL here and it will generate a request and send it to the localhost server. Now the server will read the HTTP request and response requested content. So this is the basically request header. So you can see this is the method used here, get method. This is the HTTP and this is the HTTP version 1.1. So as this is the from the client side. So I'm using the browser here. So this is the request will go by the browser. So you can see we want to access the host as localhost connection keep alive and these type of languages my browser can accept. And this is details of the user's end. So if I'm using Mozilla Firefox, it will be show up here Mozilla. If I'm using Chrome, it will show Chrome here. And this type of encoding and the language my browser can accept. So when the request goes to the server, the server will respond back with the details. So basically the server response contain the response code, data, server info, content, connection, content type and other tons of informations. So as you can see, this is the response from the server. So it's showing that HTTP protocol is used. This is the response code here, 200 doco. So we are going to export it in our next video. This is the date when exactly the content is delivered to the client 
and this is the server server version here this is the content length and it's the server details connection is keep alive and these are the content type which type of content the server is delivering so this is basically http response here so as you can see this is the response header and this is the response body so in the response body the all detail of his come any html file any css file any javascript file so all those code is written in response body so in this video we got to know about how exactly the http works in the next video we are going to talk about the response code and the methods are used in http protocol thank you so much for watching this video have a great awesome day hi my name is gautam kumawat and welcome to this amazing course in this video we are going to learn about http response code http response code represent the reaction and response of requested url directory mostly you will get 200 okay it means your request has been completed successfully and you can receive the requested file in your browser most of the time you will get 200 okay as a response code but take example if you are browsing as facebook.com so when you will browse facebook.com you will get response at 200 okay and everything every data is successfully delivered in your browser but if you want to access other people's private photos so like as they put as their photo as only me so you can't able to access those photos so if you try to access those photo it will show the response as 404 not found because that data is not available for you so that's how response code are used so you can see here if any value after 2 is coming it will be success okay if after 300 or more than it it will come it will be redirected and the most of the time you encounter 404 not not found so this is the basically client error and if any response code is starting with this 5 it will be server error so let's check out which type of methods are used in http protocol so as we talk about the two methods in our previous video that was the get and post so as you can see the get is used to request to get the resources from the server so if you are we are making any type of request we will make get request to get the data from the server so if you browsing facebook.com your client your browser will send the get request to the web server and after that the web server will deliver the data with the response code so post method is used to submit any type of online forms if you are submitting any type of data to the server post method is used the difference between get and post method is in the get method the data you are requesting will be show in the url but if you are submitting any type of post data it will not show in the url so for example you are just typing the passwords you are filling the login page you are typing there your gmail id and after that your password so those detail will be not reflected in the url bar so that is the basic difference between the get and post so post request is used when you are submitting any type of sensitive data to the web server head method is used to get only head and but not the body so if you want to see only what is the response header you don't want to show the what is the body body of it so for that you can use head method trace method is used when you want to request to get the final request so it is the basically for the proxies only put method is used when you want to store any type of information on the server for that you can use the put put method delete method is used when you want to delete 
any type of resources on the server and last but not the least is option method that is used to request to get a list of method supported by the server so if you are using option it will show you that which type of method your web application is supporting so these are the some of the most common used http methods there are other tons of but we are not going to discuss those in our course because those even not important most of the time we will use get post head trace and the option method only so this is the basic of the http how basically the client and the server architecture work i hope you have some basic knowledge about how exactly things work how the web application work so in next video we are going to learn about information gathering techniques thank you so much for watching this video have a great awesome day welcome to information gathering techniques in this we are going to learn about active information gathering active information gathering is the scanning the target so overall we are leaving the traces behind so these are the some ways we can gather information actively so either we scan the target and find out that which type of web server they are using which type of open ports they are having or either we can spy the target or we can see the target by physically accessing the target or maybe by the meeting their employees and to play the safe game is gather the information by the phone calls or the email communications for example if any expert is working on their company we have to find out who is that person and on which type of blogs that person had joined which type of problem he is putting on those blogs so maybe there is some forms he is putting information that this is type of technology he is using and this is type of bugs or problems he is facing so as a active information gatherer gather expert we have to find out every possible information by spying the target but for the bug bounty hunting active information gathering is not mostly used so we will not focus on active information gathering this is the impor important if you are doing any type of security assessment or web security audit of your client so these are the some of the way you can gather information by scanning the n map or using any various type of tools hi my name is gautam kumawat in this video we are going to talk about information gathering so there is two type of information gathering technique the first one is the active information gathering and the second one is passive information gathering so why the information gathering so much important if you are doing bug hunting penetration testing or any type of security audit as one of the person santaju said if you know the enemy and know yourself you need not fear the result of 100 battles so you should know your target very effectively you should know where your target is located who is the owner of your target which type of programming language your target is using and all tons of other type of information you should know about your target so what is the pace information gathering in the pace information gathering we will not do any type of interaction with our target we we are just going to spy our target without coming in their eyes so we are going to identify the technology they are using the tools they are using or the people who are related to the target either the external third party website they are connected to their real website and identify the subdomain of your target so we are going to do different different type of things to find out the information about our target so we can use those information while exploiting the target so how we can find all this type of information either we can find from the web archive or from the social media from the search engines and from the who is so these are the basically ways to do passive information gathering we are going to explore all these type of techniques in our upcoming videos so stay tuned
My name is Gautam Kumawat and welcome to this course. In this video we are going to learn which type of tools and technology we should install to learn bug bounty hunting. So first of all we are going to install the browser that is the OWASP Mantra. It is the basically web application security testing framework built on a top of a browser Firefox. Mantra has many built-in tools to modify the headers, manipulate the input strings, replay, get post request, edit the cookies, quickly switch between multiple proxies, control force redirection, and many such type of add-ons already installed in OWASP Mantra. So that's why many pen tester use this to do the bug hunting because you don't have to install any type of add-ons, any extra extensions in your browser. And the awesome thing is it supports Windows, Linux and Macintosh and it's free to use. So let's download the OWASP Mantra browser. Go to this link and after going to this link just click on the download. So it will be downloaded according to if you are having window, if you are having Mac or Linux. As I already downloaded into my desktop, so just install it out. Just double click on it. As I am using Mac machine. So it's popping up like as this is in not the unidden ad As I am using the Mac machine. So in window if you are installing you will get you will not get any type of pop-up here but right now I am getting pop-up that it's saying that it can't be open because of this is blah security preference allow installation. So I have to do little bit setting change go to your system preference after that go to the setting security and privacy and just unlock it. So I'm just typing down my password here and just click on OK. So right now you can see it's unlocked. So right now I'll click on the OK and you can see there's a little bit pop-up is coming up. So it's saving that OWASP mantra jns.mpk was blocked from the opening because it is not from a identified developer. So I will click on the open anyway to open it up and just click on the open and you can see the installing wizard is just coming up. So click on the continue and install for me only. Just go select the language which language you want to use and click on the continue. If you want to change the location of the installation you can change it otherwise you can directly install it. So just wait for some time and you will see that it is one of the best browser you can install on your operating system. Click on the close. So let's check out where it's installed. Here we go. Here it is. So I'm just click on it and it will be just open up within some seconds. So here it is. So I'm going to click on the options and keep in dock. So just take browser look here. I will just open up dot google.com. Wow, working perfectly. So this is a very amazing browser. You can see all it's already embedded all type of extensions like as cookies manager, live HTTP header and tons of extensions are already installed into our browser. And the beauty of it if you want to do any type of you want to do who is it's already when you type who you can see here this is already giving the suggestions which type of tools and technology you can do to do information gathering and along with the most of the hacking website is just already bookmarked 
by this Ovas mantra. So, so let's check out. Go to Hacker here, and if you want to do open source intelligence, if you want to do information gathering, all type of tools, and the website link are already inside the. bookmark tab so go to oasint and just click on the presentations you can see these are all information gathering tools and techniques links out here so let's close it out and the second thing we need meta exploitable so meta exploitable is a intensely vulnerable linux virtual machine it is the best on the linux operating system and available as a virtual machine so you don't have to install any type of operating system it's already installed just download the virtual machine from given link and you can log in using the default password as msf admin and msf admin so go to this link and click on download to download it out but before installing this machine you should install any type of, of virtual machine environment like as vmware or virtual box so go to vmware and download this virtual environment and install it out go to the downloads and you can see there are t other type of like as I am using Mac operating system, so Fusion is already given here. For the Windows, you can use Workstation Pro. And if you are, if you don't wa want to invest money, then you can go for the VirtualBox here. That is the free one. Here it is. So these these are the two two software which are giving virtualization environment in your computer system so download this vmware and after that you can download it and install it out as you can see i already downloaded it on my desktop here it is so when you extract it you will get these type of files out here so i am going to use this meta exploitable vmx so just click on it and it will be open up my VMware Fusion so as I already working on this machine so what I will do I will just uh, restart, restart this machine so you can go to know that how you have to log in into this machine so when you will start this machine by double clicking on it it will be start like this starting up and you have to wait for some second to get started with this machine so as you can see the lo default login and password is msf admin so we will type that login and password so my login is msf admin and password is msf admin just hit enter so right now you can see we are successfully logged into this machine so to know the ip address of this machine we will type ifconfig here so this is the 172.16.138.204 is the IP address of this machine, this virtual machine. So we can open up this machine by entering this IP address into our browser. So let's try out. Enter this IP address here, 172, oops, I forget. Dot sixteen dot one three eight sixteen dot one three eight dot two zero four. Here we go. So you can see we successfully able to access the meta exploitable two machine out here, and these are the all already install some of the vulnerable web application inside this virtual machine. So you don't have to do any type of homework. Lot of people, lot of instructor will tell you that you should install XAMP and blah blah shit. But those tools are going to waste up your time. So 
you don't have to work hard you have to work smart to create your web application pen testing lab to learn the bug bounty hunting the third tool we need to install is brub suite brub suite is basically java based web application testing framework it is used by most of the web application pen tester or the bug hunter to intercept the request it can help you to do a lot of brub suite can help you to find out lot of it's having lot of option to play with the web application so we are going to explore this brub suite in very effective manner in upcoming videos Thank you for watching this video. Have a great awesome day. Welcome to this course. My name is Gautam Kumawat and in this video we are going to learn how to do brute force attack. So as you can see my country virtual machine metasploitable is currently running and this is the IP address of this machine along with this is the DVW lab that we got inside this virtual machine so if you visit any any web page here if you are clicking on the instructions as you can see the request is captured by the brub suite so i have to click on the forward forward to complete this request but right now i don't want to use brub suite so what i will do i will just turn off the intercept here and after that without going to brute shoot i can visit any web page so here we go so this dwws lab is basically dam vulnerable web app it's already containing different different type of vulnerabilities so you can practice your skills without harming any type of applications so there is a brute force attack command injection csrf file inclusion sql injection file upload and accesses so we are going to explore all these of vulnerabilities using the different different labs and along with on the real website also believe me this course is going to really fun for you and making a lot of money so right now we are going to if we are going to set up brute force we can able to visit all the web pages without intercepting the request here because our intercept is off right now so if i on the intercept and click on the any of the link out here you can see it is scrolling and the request is intercepted by the brute suit but i don't want to intercept the request so i will turn off the interceptor here so in the in the dww lab there is a setting medium low and high so if you want to make this script setting or the your web application setting to the medium your website will be less secure if you are putting is high your website is more secure so as for the penetration testing or for to find out the bug in this applications we are putting as low here so i will click on the submit and you can see the security level is set to the low so let's practice the brute brute force attack out here so in brute force attack we will do the permutation and combination of the username and password and find out the actual password of to log in into this web application so right now we are not aware of aware about the username and password to log in into this web application so what i am going to do i am just going to turn on the interception and just refresh this page so as you can see this is the intercepted by our brute suit click on the forward and here it is so right now i'm just putting any random username out here like as username is admin and password is 123 and click on the login you can see the same requested will be intercepted by brute suit so here is the username i typed as admin and the password i typed as 123 even also it's showing the security of this web application as low and this is the cookies of the web application the parameter of this is important but this value is not important because we are going to 
first this value and tried out different different value as a username and password. So what I'm going to do right now, I will just right click here and send this request to the intruder. So here is here it is. So right now you can see there is no color out here. But if I send to the intruder, the color of the intruder will be changed. So go to intruder and positions. So right now you can see which which type of positions you can do the fudging or you can put payloads out here. So we are not interested in the security and the cookies value here. We are only interested in the, the username and the passwords. So what I'm going to do is just click on the clear and only select the admin out here and click on the add and select this one two three out here because as we are this is the password click on the add here that's it so these type of attacks are given here that this is type of attacks we can do but to first the value as a username and password cluster bomb attack will be fine for us so if you want to know about how exactly the cluster bomb attack work you can go to this link and read all these type of attack out here as you can see the cluster bomb is used for multiple payload sets so it will create the combination of password by permutation and the combination so let's check out what we are going to do right now so as I already selected this field and after that I will click on the select the cluster bump and start the attack. So to start the attack I will go to the intruder and click on the start attack. As you can see it's showing the error as a payload set showing that present payload listed is empty. So first of all we have to give the payload. So just go to the payloads here and after that we can set the payload so this is the payload set 1 is for the username and payload set 2 is for the password here so on the payload either if you are having any type of dictionary of the already available usernames and password you can export them into here by this clicking on the loading up but right now as of now I'm not going to do that if you are having you can select the list of the passwords or you can select the dictionary of the password and click on the open but right now what I am going to do I am just going to add some random random keywords here or some random usernames here so username as admin I am putting click on the add username as administration I am putting click on the add I will put as a dvw as a username because maybe it can be username i'll put my name as a username so these are all possible usernames i just put it on this website so this is the payload processing but i'm not going to change any type of stuff out here and after that i will click on the payload second so here also i will put admin and password 123 as a password it may be 1234 as a password so you can give the input of every possible dictionary out here so if you are having maybe 10 15 or 100 or maybe more than that passwords you can just go to load and you know import that list into this group suite so after going to do that I'm only selecting the simple list here because it's not you know recursive and we are not going to do that we are just going to select the simple list out here so as we as we seen just we successfully given a payload here and option this is not going to work because it's saying for the number of thread so if you are the number of thread if if it is high then what it's going to happen maybe your website or maybe your target machine can be crashed because of too many requests so you have to keep it either one to three only but it's already as a disable in the demo version so you can't change it out 
So after setting all, all the details, you have to go to the intruder and start the attack. So it's giving some little bit of uh, warning like as the sum of the function in the community version will not work, but don't worry. Click on the OK and you can see the attack is already started. So I will just do the full screen out here and let's, let's check out which username and password is currently working here. So there's a, this was the, it's typing different, different type of username and password. So as we given in the, our payload, so this is when you click on it, it will be request what the request sent out as username as admin, password as admin, and the, what was the response from the web server. So as you seen that response was, res status was 200. So it's okay. No problem. As you can see, the length is given here is the same length. So we have to find out that where the length is changing. So if you, if you go down, go down, go down, as you can see the length is changing into the, this keyword here. So the payload was admin and password was password out here. So when you click on it, it will show the, what was the request and what was the response out here. So this was the response and this is the actual username and password. We can enter into that box and we can successfully log into that page. As you go to the render, you will find out that go a little bit down. Welcome to the password protect area admin. So this is the actual password of that login page. So that's how the brute force attack work. So in lot of website, they are not protecting their self from the brute force attack. Because right now, if you go to the Google, they are having, if you try out the password wrong input, giving the input of wrong password one to three times, either they will come with the captcha or maybe they will ask any type of security questions. So this is the security can be able to given by the developer so they can stop the brute force attack. So if you are just developer, just make sure that if you are, if there is any login, login panel or any login page, if the user is entering any different, different password or any wrong password two, three times, either you can give the captcha or you can ask any type of security questions, or you can send out the any type of one time password to that user so that no one can illegally access someone else account. And even if you go to this website, you can click on the view source page here. Here we go. So re read the code out here that it will ask for passwords, username, password, and if the password is correct, it's going to say you when the login will successful, welcome to the password protected area. So thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great awesome day. My name is Gautam Kumawat and in this video, we are going to learn how to install Brub Suite. In previous video, we have seen installing OWASP Mantra and along with Metasploitable. So let's download and install the group suite. So go to port swigger website and you will find out the download option here. So there are three versions available of the group suite. So for the community version, you don't have to pay anymore. It's basically free for everyone. And if you want the professional version, this is the price of the price of the professional version. But along with you will get some different, different type of facility out here. So it's containing the web vulnerability and scanner. So you can scan any type of web application and it will tell you the, this type of vulnerabilities containing your web application. And along with different, different type of manual tools it's containing. And these are for the enterprise. But right now for the tutorial, Either I'm going to use professional version or community version. 
सो इफ यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू पे एनी टाइप ऑफ मनी यू कैन गो विद द कम्युनिटी वर्जन सो क्लिक ऑन डाउनलोड टू डाउनलोड इट आउट एंड डिपेंडिंग ऑन विच टाइप ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम यू आर यूजिंग यू कैन इंस्टॉल इट सो इफ यू आर यूजिंग मैक ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम एज इज शोइंग फॉर द मैक इफ यू आर यूजिंग विंडोज ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इट विल बी डाउनलोड फॉर द विंडोज ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम सो आई विल जस्ट गो टू डाउनलोड फॉर द मैक ओस सो क्लिक ऑन डाउनलोड हेयर टू डाउनलोडिंग अप एंड इट्स बेसिकली एटी टू नाइंटी एम बी फाइल सो इट विल टेक सम मिनट्स इन डाउनलोड टिल जस्ट आई एम पोजिंग दी वीडियो परफेक्ट सो इट सक्सेसफुल डाउनलोडेड जस्ट क्लिक ऑन इट टू रन इट एंड यू कैन सी इट्स ओपनिंग सो आफ्टर दैट I have to just double click on the Brave Suit Community Edition installer to install it out, and it's showing that application download from internet. Are you sure you want to open it up? So yes, I want want to open it, and this is the installation wizard. Click on the next, and the location where you want to install it. So it will require two three one MB and the free space. Here we go. So as I seen, I successfully installed the Brew Suite Community Community Edition. Just close it out and check it out that where exactly it's installed. So here it is. Just double click on it to open it up, and this is the Brew Suite Community Edition. Just agree the license, and I don't want to save this type of stuff because I was already using the Brew Suite before. So just delete it out. Select the temporary project and click on the next. Start the Brave Suite. Here we go. So this is the basically the interface of the Brave Suite. There are the different different of options out here: target, proxy, spider, scanner, intruder, scanners. Perfect. So right now we are going to configure our Brave Suite with the our browser here so we are using oas browser here oas mantra so go to the oas mantra setting and here is the preferences and inside the preferences i have go to the network setting here so in the network setting i will find find the option of the configuration click on the setting and click on the manual proxy configuration Go to your Brave Suite, and inside the Brave Suite, you will find out proxy option here. And inside the proxy, these are some of the details: intercept, HTTP history. We are going to learn in our next video tutorial. Right now, we are just going to connect our Brave Suite uh, to the browser. So just click on the option here, and after that, you will see that there will be. Port number is eighty eight. It's using, and this is the one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one is the local host. So I will use the same same address and details to fill out in our was mantra. So let's change the port to the eight zero eight one and click on the OK. And after that, go to your was mantra. And type down same address here one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one, and after that you have to enter the port number here that is eight zero eight one, and click on the use this proxy server for all protocols, and remove this here, and after that click on the OK button here. So right now we successfully configured the our. was mantra with the brub suite here out there so let's check out it's working or it's not working go to was mantra and visit any type of a site for the sake so right now as we seen like as uh, i'm planning to visit This machine. So this is the one seven two sixteen one three eight. 
172.16.138.204 hit enter so you can see the connection is it's just connecting so go to your group suite here and it successfully intercepted the request out here so you can see uh, this is the basically the user's end as the Mozilla Firefox the OWASP mantra is using and you have to click on the forward click on the forward and here we go this is successfully loaded up so as you seen that we successfully intercepted the request and response out there so this is the HTTP history we are accessing this website and the, these are basically the uh, host host out here so even we can change out the host ID here by intercepting the traffic so right now what we did we just configure our browser with the group shoot so let's see how exactly the group suite works hi my name is Gautam Kumaut and in this video we are going to learn how to intercept HTTPS traffic so if you are just newly installed any type of OWASP mantra or the Firefox browser and if you just try out to intercept the traffic of the HTTP website like as google.com as you can see it's the traffic is intercepted by here and when I click on the forward forward it will just load it up so this is the HTTP website as I already embedded or imported some certificate in my browser so I'm not getting any type of error issue but you are just trying it first time then you have to do a little bit setting here so what you have to do just to go to the HTTP burp go to the CA certificate and download the certificate on your desktop so if it goes to here I will just find out the certificate and just copy this certificate on my desktop here, here it is so let's just try out to import it so I have to go to the tool sorry in the setting I have to go and after that preferences and here I will search for the certificate click on the view certificate and you will find the import option here so click on the import add the certificate and click on the open so you can see it's giving the alert here that this certificate is already installed as a certificate authority so as I already so that's why this alert is coming up otherwise this alert will not come so just click on ok and click it ok so that's the work you have to do and after that you can easily intercept any HTTPS traffic from your Brub Suite. So thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great awesome day. And if you are feeling any type of problem, just feel free to message me or even you can ask in question answer section. Thank you. In this video, we are going to explore file upload vulnerability. So what is file upload vulnerability? In your site, you will find out different type of functions like as uploading in your profile photo or any type of file on the website. So if that website is accepting any malicious file also, so that website is vulnerable to the file abroad vulnerability. This vulnerability allow attacker to upload a file with malicious code and that code can be executed on the server. So let's see what the impact of this file upload vulnerability. An attacker can be able to upload any type of phishing page on the website or even after uploading any type of cell even he can deface the website page. Defacing is the changing the home page of that website. Or attacker can reveal the internal information of the web server to the public and disclose any type of sensitive information. Or maybe he can sell other users' private information on the dark web. Along with, the attacker can root the server and if the server is rootable, 
he can gain access over the thousand of other website also so this is the very sensitive vulnerability in 2011 i used to hack into thousand of website by routing the servers and this at this vulnerability was responsible for hacking into those thousand of websites so you can see how dangerous this vulnerability is so how you can find the find upload vulnerability in any website search for any file upload option on that website and if you find out that upload option just try to upload any simple file first and if successful go on google and search for the cell like c99 dhanush cell and there are tons of cell are already available to help you out to gain access over that website and by passing the filter techniques if you uploaded those cell you are done with your hacking this is for the developer purpose so if you are developing any website this type of information you should keep in mind before developing a site or to stay away from file upload vulnerability only allow specific file extension always check the file size because your image may be some of the kbs but your cell file may be containing a lot of code so it will be with more memory only authorized and authentic user to use the feature of file upload ensure the file upload file cannot be executed on your web server be careful with the compressed file store file in non public accessible directory so that if any user can upload the file but he unable to find out that which path is our web application using to find out that file and the last and but not least is use any type of virus scanner so that will scan that uploaded file by the user and can be find out that it's virus or it's just a normal jpg file so this type of information you should keep on mind if you are developing any type of site to avoid the file upload vulnerability hi my name is gautam kumawat and let's do the practical demonstration of file upload vulnerability So as you can see in my lab this is metasploitable is currently running and here is my browser wasp mantra and here is the browser community version so everything is just set up up and the intercept is currently off so i can able to browse that website normally as you can see here so go to the security level and here we are just going to put the security level as low So right now we are going to explore the file upload vulnerability so go to the upload and here you can see that there is a file upload option you can browse any file and after after that you can upload that file here so to find this file upload vulnerability you have to visit that website and after that find out any upload type of option where you can upload either you can upload profile photo or any type of document so even if you are new to it how to if the website is too much large you are you are able to go to different different website you can go to the even you can do the directory buster or you can use simple doc where that is for example i'm going to find out where i can upload files on the google so i will go to the google.com and after that i will type upload here so you can see on the result there is a upload upload thing sir or either in i will just put in url as a upload here in url and click on the search oops i don't know why it's not working i'll just copy it out and paste here upload perfect so you can see on this all those website on the google.com there is a there is a option of the upload option so when here you can find out even you can upload some of the documents here and 
that's how you can use Google Docs to find out upload section on any website. So I'm just trying to upload the any JPG image because these are saying that choose a image to upload. But if you can up, up successfully able to upload the image, that doesn't mean that this website is vulnerable to file upload. File up, upload will exist when you can be able to upload any malicious file on this website. So I will just first I will try to upload some image file here. So I will download the image file of me go to the image and I will probably save this file. So just click on the save images and I will save this images gotham.jpg. So click on the save on the desktop and see has the file. So just go back and I will just check out the source code of this website. So click on the view source code and you can see the checkout that this is saying upload file here and these are this these are type of the file we can upload and if the upload successfully then it will be saying that upload successfully and the file if not exported successfully then it will show that your image was not uploaded so just close it out and just try to upload that file so i will just click on the open and i will upload it so you can see here this file is successfully uploaded so i will copy the path and after removing the hash here i will paste this path so you can see here is my photo on this web server here so i will just go back and try to upload the cell here so browse so right now i'm not having any type of cells so which type of cells you can download from the Google, I will recommend go for the Dhanush cell because it's one of the powerful cell I have ever seen. So just search for D-H-A-N-U-S-H Dhanush cell code. Or either you can go for the any type of cells like a C-99. Oops, because I use Google Docs, so it's asking for uh, some captcha. So I have to select the breeze here. This is the breeze. This is breeze. This is breeze. Perfect. Oops. So I will search for D H A N U S H. Dhanu cell. Sorry. Dhanu cell and code. Again, this is coming with the captcha, so I will try it with a different website because it just sucks because I just used, you know, Google Docs out there. So I will search for the Dhanush shell code. So it will just display the raw code here. Go to this website or go to this website or go to this website. So this looking perfectly, so I will just click on the row and here we go so I will just copy this entire code by selecting command and A or even you can press Control and A to select all and after that just copy it select all and just copy it so we have to paste this code in our text file so in Mac I'm having this text edit if you're using Windows you can go to the notepad so I will paste here and to save this file, I will just go to the beginning of this page and change the username and password of this cell. So I will change the username to Gotham and password is to Gotham also. Perfect. So right now I have to just save this file. So I will go to the file and save. So I will save it as cell.php and just click on the save. So probably you will see in the Mac if you're using Mac, maybe that is not text editor. So go to the format here and you will see, you will find the option here, make text editor here. So you have to click on it. Right now you don't have to click on it because it's showing rich text, but we don't want reset here. We only want simple text. So I will just close it out and check out that it's saved on my 
desktop here it is so i will just try to upload that dhanush cell on our already given website that was here we go go to the browse and upload the cell.php here that is username and password here it is and click on the upload so you can see on the low security we can successfully able to upload this cell.php file without any restriction so if your target website is less vulnerable you can be able to successfully upload this cell without any doing any headache so just i will just copy this path and check out that really where my cell is located so i will go here and paste it so you can see this is asking for the username and password but right now i'm i just want to go with the medium level security because right now the security is low so i will change the security to the medium and right now your target site is medium vulnerable to the deep file upload so i will just try out so let's see you can be upload the cell.php here oops it's showing your image was not uploaded because it's containing uh, some of the you know malicious code inside it so let's check out the source code here and you can see that they are giving that some some restriction there the image should be image or jpg and the, this is the upload size that sh should contain less than this number and if the file is successfully uploaded it will show that successfully uploaded if not uploaded then it will, it will show your image was not uploaded so we have to bypass this restriction right now we are uploading cell but it's showing that you can only upload image and jpg file so let's bypass the the security of this website so let's turn on the intercept and I will just rename this I will just rename this cell to the cell dot cpg here so I will just copy it to keep this origin file and I will just temper into this this exactly file so I will just rename it to the cell dot cpg or even you can open this file and even you can click on the save oops so i just have to copy it out and go to the new format after that paste and if i click on the save then i will upload is cell.php dot cpz and click on the save use cpz perfect so here we go so right now you can see the extension is cell.php.dpc and as we as we see that there is a restriction we can only upload jpg file here so i will just upload this file as a cell.php.jpg so just click on the upload and you can see this is the intercepted by our proof suit as you can see this was the basically the file file size limit so i will just copy it and i will paste it here to bypass and the second thing i'm going to do is just erasing the cell.php.jpg to the cell.php and click on the forward here we go so you can see the cell.php is uploaded here so i will just copy it and go to here so just forward this request forward forward and here we go we can successfully able to see that our cell is here so i will just turn off the it's perfectly working so right now we will just go to security as a high security and just upload the file here 
so on the high security if you upload this same it will not accept wow this filter is perfect so i will just off the intercept and i will go the upload any other file to check out what was the where the file was uploading so you can see this was the exactly path and our file name was cell.php so just copy it out and remove the hash after that paste it path here and our cell name was cell.php cell.php and here is our dhanu cell so i will give the username at gotam and password as gotam sorry gotam and click on the enter here sorry my z was capital i was typing the wrong password so right now i can successfully login into my dhanush cell so right now you can see that what you can do using this cell if you uploaded any type of cell on the web server you can be able to find out which type of operating system they are using and that that operating system is maybe vulnerable to some of the tech so even you can hack that operating system also or you can root that operating system you can root root the web server and along with you can if there is a thousand of websites are already hosted on that web server you can hack those all those websites so that what you can do using uploading a cell so you can see the system information they are giving that i'm using linux meta exploitable 2.6 this is the server i'm using apache apache 2.2 and this is the current uid the disk space in my operating system and uh, this is the free space this is the my server ip this is my own ip from which i am accessing this web server and right now on this directory i am here so you can see there are tons of information this web cell is giving about your target so right now i will just go and check out even you can create you know different different type of directories here so i will just try out to create the directory with the name uh, gotham here and i will you can see right now there is a no gotham so i will create this directory and will click on the create so you can see here the directory is created gotham and even inside i can go and check out what is there there is nothing so i will click on the back to go back and even you can you going to fire some of the command on the execute here so i will just execute the command as ls and click on the execute so it will give the result like as on this working directory uploads which type of files they are having so as you can see we are uploaded dhanus dhanus.php gotham cell.php all this file already uploaded so even you can download the uploaded content and you can you can easily access those content also and right now you can upload your cell or whatever data you want to put on that website hi my name is gotam kumawat and in this video we are going to learn login bypass using sql injection so as you can see this was word is already saving that we are going to bypass the login page so if any login page is asking for the username password we are going to bypass that login page so let's see the practical demonstration here as you can see this is the basically the website i am having and i have to find out login page bypass bug in this website so one essential thing i need is login page because if i don't have knowledge of the login page i don't have access over the login page how will i will find out that vulnerability so to check out the login page in this website as you can see there is tons of hyperlinks are over there so it's not that much easy deal to find out the login page in this website because you can see many other sir links are over there and if you are going to do it manually it will take a lot of tons of time so what i'm going to do is right now is to use the power of google docs as i already told you in this previous lecture of information gathering that how google docs work so i am going to use those google docs power in this website to find out the login page 
so I'm just what I'm going to do I will just copy the suicide name and and you can see there is this society is not having that much of the login page here so I will check out for this URL and again I will search for the admin here because the most important page is start with the admin so let's go down and check out if there is any admin here so you can see this is the admin page here so I will just try out the SQL injection that's used for the login with pipe login page bypass so I will write down some query here that is the dash or dash 1 is equal to 1 is equal to 1 and I will just copy it out and the paste on these login pages here so I will put the same value as the username and the same value as password and click on the login here so you can see this site is visible only for the MNIT internet so I enable to access this site because this is the only available on the internet here so I will just close this tab again here and I will put the same username and the password and click on the login wow that's amazing so you can see I just login into this web page here and this is the logout sign is coming and they are having a lot of project here there so let's try I will just try to refresh this page so I can got you know other details also so this is the actual username and the password I used for this website so you can see there are tons of research paper as already available there and even the I can take the action I can delete those so you can see that's how I can be able to bypass any type of login page here and if you are amazing that this is the vulnerability also found on the Google, Yahoo and other tons of top website. So this is the power of the SQL login page bypass. So how exactly this is working that is we are going to explore in this video also. So as you can see to bypass I will just search for the online text editor go here and here we go so as you can see I used here dash or dash 1 is equal to 1 so how this query is just executing so as you can see I'm using the op or operator so if this value is not true this is going to be just execute and always 1 is equal to 1 is always true so if the value is always true we will successfully login into our database so even if this is not working even you can use instead of 1 is equal to 1 a is equal to a or any character you can use it use out here because some of the website what they will do they will block out 1 is equal to 1 here so if they are using the blacklisting approach you can change the value out here you can use make the 3 is equal to 3 but make sure that all this value right in here and right in here should be same so in the next video I will show you that how I using this login page bypass injection I can be able to find out bypass the login page of the shopping website and I can see there's username passwords their names address phone numbers passwords and other tons of details including their credit cards debit card details also so that's how this vulnerability is too much dangerous so if you are just a developer just make sure that your website is not vulnerable to this SQL injection vulnerability web page bypass thank you so much for watching this video have a great awesome day along this tutorial I am adding one of the research resource that is the cheat sheet out here so I will just open up this cheat sheet so as you can see there are the list of the query here so even if that is not working even you can what you can do you can copy out this data and you will just try out so just go to this one copy it and just paste it in this login pages so you can use these queries to bypass the login page
Hi, welcome to this course. My name is Gautam Kumawat and in this video we are going to learn cross-site scripting. It's also called as XSS. So what is cross-site scripting? It is basically the client-side code injection attack. In this, the attacker aims to execute the malicious script in a web browser of the victim by including or injecting the malicious code into a vulnerable web application. The actual attack occurs when the victim visits the web page or web application that executes the malicious code. So how exactly this attack is working? See here. So the attacker finds out any vulnerable website that is vulnerable to cross-site scripting and after that he will inject the malicious code or malicious script into that website. And the web server will store that malicious code and malicious script into their database. When any user want to access that page from the web server, he will get the same page that is containing the malicious script. So according to the attacker behavior, whether he want to tap the information, whether he want to tap the cookies, whether he want to do the phishing, whatever type of attack he want to do, he can include that in the malicious script. So at the same time, when the that vulnerable application is delivered to the user's browser, he will get attacked by the that script and all data is sent to the attacker by that script. So that's how the user got infected. So we, where we can find out the accesses? If you find any type of input box where you can type any value given any numerical value or any alphabetic value, there will be you can inject any accesses malicious code. So it can found in any search box, login box, login form, sign up form or comment box. What are the risk or impact of the cross-site scripting? If any web application is vulnerable to cross-site scripting, you can spread the worms, you can do the cookies tap, phishing, keylogging, you can capture the data pressed by the user or deface that page, you can change the home page of that application by some another page. You can do the URL redirection. You can do the identity theft or the session hijacking. You can do the Daniel of services attack or any type of financial fraud. If your target website is banking website. So all these type of things you can do if your web application is vulnerable to cross site scripting. There are three type of cross site scripting reflected that is also called as non-persistent stored that is called as persistent and third one is the DOM based accesses. What is the difference between reflected and the stored cross-site scripting? The reflected cross-site scripting occur when the attacker inject browser executable code within the single HTTP response. Overall, the injected attack is not stored within the application itself. So, impacted the user who opened the malicious crafted link or third-party web application. So, it will only impact the users who will open that malicious link. Other users will be not infected from this attack. So, just do the opposite thing and you will find out the stored accesses. In stored accesses, if that vulnerable website is vulnerable to stored accesses, all users will be got infected because that malicious code is just stored into the database. So if anyone is visiting that website, all people will be got affected. But in the reflected, only those users got affected whom you sended the special crafted link to them. So where you can practice the accesses, there are the three type of labs out there. First one is the public firing range dot appsport.com and leadtimes.net and access game appsport. So on these three labs, go out, reach out to this lab and try out your access skill. So you can sharp how you can able to find out or you can exploit any type of web application that is vulnerable to access 
course my name is Gautam Kumbhavat and in previous video you have seen what is cross site scripting. In this video we are going to do the practical demonstration of cross site scripting. So let's get started. As you can see my meta spreadable machine is currently running and I just open up this IP on the URL here. So we are going to learn about accesses reflected. So as it's asking for the my name. So as I already told you that you can find out accesses vulnerability in any input box. So here is our input box. We are going to try to put some values out here. And the second thing is if you are trying to find out accesses vulnerability in any website, just use Firefox because if you use Google Chrome, some of the functionality like as pop-ups and other things are just blocked in Google Chrome. So just try out in the Firefox or OWASP Mantra browser. So let's see it's asking for my name. So I will just blindly give my name here and you can see it's showing hello Gautam. So I will just check the page source here and search for Gautam here. And you can see it's here it is. So basically it's showing hello Gautam and it's in the pre tag. So I will just try out with this some, you know, special characters out there that can be used in the script and I will click on the submit and even same response is getting back. Other thing is you have to observe is your security level should be low. So if you want to change the security level, you can go here DVW security and after that you can select the security and click on the submit. So this is right time to just inject a inject any JavaScript here. So I will just type down the script script and prompt and after that accesses here inside that I'm going to give value accesses here and just semicolon and just close this tag. Copy this and paste it in this search bar or in this input box. Click on the submit and you can see this is it reflecting back. So we successfully exploited this DBWA web app and this web app is currently vulnerable to cross site scripting. So access here. So I will just click on OK and I will change the DBWA security level to the medium. So let's try out. So I will just give the same script and just click on the submit. So let's see how it's going to be, but it's not just popping up. So something is blocked out there. So let's check in the view page source, what we are going to get and search for the script. So here is our script out there. So as you can see, it's there is no script tag out there before the, you know, after the hello, there is no script tag. So it's using the block list approach and it's blocking the initial tag of the script. So as our script script was this, so it's blocking this script tag here. So that's why our script is unable to execute. So what we can do like a, they are blocking this special keyword as a script. So if you, you like want to check out the view page source, you can check out as it's, you know, replacing this string with the space here. So that's why our script is unable to run. So I will just try out with the different, you know, method. So what I'm going to do, I will just change the script font as, you know, some uppercase and some in lower caps. So S C R I P T. You can try out anything here. Some, you know, there is no, no sequence of out of these things like as you have to see maybe capital, maybe little or whatever. So S C R I P T and just, I will just copy it out and paste it here. Boom. So it's also vulnerable to accesses. So using the different method, we have to find out, we have to give the script that is executable on this web applications. So that's how it's work. Let's try out some other level out there. So security level, go to the DVWA security and select high. So if you give the same script here, oh my God, it's not executing. 
So let's check out the source code here. And you can see they are just, you know, other those special character greater than less and are just converted into the HTML encoding out there. So that's why it's not executing. So let's check out as this is the encoding value here. So as you can see, this is the less than sign and it's converted into the add that LT. So this is the less than sign and it's converted into the add that LT. So that's why they are converting those sign is to end HTML encoding. So what you have to do right now, we have to bypass this script. So we are not going to use these type of special character that is filtered by this web applications. And even if you see in the source code also that they are using some HTML special character. So if, if you give any type of, you know, special character, they'll convert it into the ASCII code here. So right now we are going to explore the cross site scripting store. So it's asking for the name value here and message you want to give. So as my name is Gautam and message, I will type, hello guys, cheers. And I will just click on this sign into the guest book. So I did. So as you can see, it's storing the name and the message in the database. So if you just refresh it, it will be just refresh the again name, store the again name in the database here. So everything is stored into database. So as you can see, if you are just inserting any type of script in this input box, so all of the people who are visiting this website will be affected by cross site scripting. So I will give the name as Gotham and again, I will type some script here. So a script is going to be a script alert, script alert and sorry, alert is going to be accesses and I will close the script tag here. So just close it and just copy it on the message here. Everything is perfect. So when I click on the guest book here, you can see this is the reflecting back on my screen and I will just click it. Okay. So again, right now I just infected this website from the cross site scripting. And if any of the guy who visit this site and replace page, her, his, her page will be popped up with this accesses here. So as you can see, it's storing basically the every code, whatever I'm putting in, into this input box. So that's how every user who is visiting will be affected from this cross site scripting. So if you check out the source code here that they are taking this script and just, you know, storing it into the database. And even if you have a look over the name here, so if I will type down name as Gotham Kumavat, so you can see it's not working. So even if you put any script out there, the script will not complete this path. So what I'm going to do, I, I'm going to bypass these limitations using the group suit here. So as, as you can see, my group suit is currently running on the proxy at zero at one. So I will just edit it out to the at zero at one. Sorry, just click on the edit here and changes to one after I will click on OK. Enable this intercept and second go to this and just change out go to the setting preferences search for the X, Y or proxy and just enable it. So you can see whatever input I will give here it will be just reflected into the proof suit. So I will just take the proof suit here I will just give input as one and in the message box, I will give the script here. So just click on the sign book here and you can see it's reflecting back captured by my group suit. So let's check out the text name it's giving the text name is one. So right now I'm going my script here. Here we go and just click on the forward. Wow. 
So as you can see, it's reflecting. So that's how we just bypass the this limitations also. So you have to use your mind in different different way to bypass different things. And if you don't have any type of programming language or networking language, what you can do, I'm just giving jet cheat sheet also. So this is the my access cheat sheet. You can go to resources and download this cheat sheet. And the password of this cheat sheet I already show you on the my presentation. That is the capital Z Gautam and capital K Kumawat. As you can see, there is a lot of malicious code is out there so you can just copy those code and just put into you know any type of search box so one of the my student he was he's not having any type of programming or networking knowledge and he earned more than ten thousand dollar yes more than ten thousand dollar in finding cross-site scripting so he was just what he was doing he was just just copying these things and just pasting out in you know any bug hunting website or any input box where he feel like is that may be vulnerable to cross-site scripting so that's a full of cross-site scripting so you can go through this complete filter bypass list and check it out search for the OASP accesses cheat sheet so when you go go to this first link and you can able to find out that there are tons of malicious code are there which are which can be used to bypass the filter here so just read all these all this type of code here and go to the practice range i give already given three four website in the slide out there so go to those website and practice your cross-site scripting skills it is the one of the most common vulnerability that is found on the web applications so just practice it and try it on the live website like as what i did here thank you so much for watching this video have a great awesome day Hello, welcome to this course. My name is Gautam Kumawat and I am your instructor in this course. In this video, we are going to learn a little bit about what is command injection. So as you can see, this word is already saying that we are going to inject some of the command into any vulnerable web application that is vulnerable to the command injection. So what exactly it is? Command injection is a attack in which the goal is execution of the arbitrary command on the host operating system via a vulnerable application. Command injection attacks are possible when an application passes unsafe user supplied data in the form of cookies, HTTP headers, etc. to a system cell. In this attack, the attackers supplied Operating system command are usually executed with the privilege of the vulnerable web application. Command injections attack are possibly largely due to the insufficient input validation. So we are going to input any type of system command on any input box. This attack is happen because of insufficient input validation by the developers. So the developer will not validate the whatever the input coming from the user so where we can find command injection we can find in web applications adsl soho routers ip cameras network printers ip pbx applications raspberry pi based web applications arduino based web applications and other tons of other places we can be able to find command injection why this command injection is happening so this is the basically one of the code here so we are going to learn what exactly this code is doing so you can see this code is asking for the any type of ip address from the user and after that it will apply the ping command over there and hyphen c is used here for the count and it's going to ping that ip address for four times so let's see in their practical demonstration here. So I will use that ping command and it's asking for the IP address or even you can give the domain name also. So as I'm giving the domain name google.com and I will hit enter. So you can see this command is just pinging this IP address unlimited, unlimited times. But I just want to stop it 
right now because as this command is saying that we have to ping only four times so what i will do i will use as ping and after i will use hyphen count and i want to ping it for four times only and i will type the domain name here hit enter so you can see it will ping only four times one two three four only four times doing the pinging and you can see the four packets are transmitted four packet received and zero packet lost so that's how it's working and after executing this command it will just print out that command as echo so echo in the linux echo is used to print out whatever input you want to see so like as i want to see hello so it will print out hello so whatever input we are receiving here it will be print out that result into your display or into the web application so that's exactly it's doing so as it's asking for the gate parameter here and after that you will enter that ip address so we are just playing with the command injection so i just want to separate it with the the semicolon here so this is used as the separator or even we are having tons of other separator that i will explain in in this video so we can even we can use the separator to do it and after that i will just give the payload or any type of system command that i want to execute into that computer system so what is the risk or impact of the command injection so after gaining access an attacker will attempt to escalate their privilege on the server or maybe he will install some malicious scripts like as backdoors to gain the access over that web application or maybe he will deface that web application root the server and stuff he can be able to do by playing with that web application if that web application is vulnerable to command injection or maybe he can make your server part of a botnet to be used at a later dates as you can see one command is given here if any web application is vulnerable to command injection what if user is giving this command as input so as you already know this this command will remove everything from your computer as hyphen r is used for the recursively and r is used for the force and rm for the remove so it will remove everything from your computer system so how harmful it can be if your computer system or if your web service vulnerable to command injection vulnerability so as you can see i only talk about these type of operators we can use as a separator so this is the and operator this is the and and operator this is the pipe operator this is the semicolon this is used for the new line so all these type of operators we are going to use in our practical demonstration so in the next next lecture we are going to find out how we can find how we can do the practical of the command injection vulnerability thank you so much for watching this video have a great awesome day see you in the next lecture so in previous video we talk about what is the command injection vulnerability in this we are going to do the practical demonstration of command injection vulnerability so if you are facing any type of problem just feel free to ask me in the question answer session or even you can email me so let's get started just open up your dwl lab and you can see this is the command injection vulnerability here so it's saying that ping for free enter an ip address below so we have to enter any type of ip address here so right now as i'm i'm going to enter the ip address of our local host here so local host is 127.0.0.1 here so when i click on the submit see what it's going to do it's going to ping that ip address for the 1 to 3 times so you can see this type of code is currently running it may be ping hyphen c here and after 3 and this is the ip address 127.0.0.1 and after pinging that ip address it's it's just printing or displaying that output to you so it's using echo command as you can see three packet received and these all are the details given below here so as we are seeing that this input box is using some of the computer system 
to execute all those command and just displaying us the output. So we will try to execute some of our command also. So if I will do as ls command, it is the basically listing the directory as even I can use in the my Mac. So if I will do the ls here, it's going to display the all all data in my computer system. So I will just check out by clicking on the submit and you will say nothing happened because it is not an IP address. So it's not going to run. So let's check out the source code of this, this web application. So when I click on the view source code, this is the for the low security. So it's asking for the target detail and after getting the target detail, it's going to ping that IP address three times and display that result using the echo command. So that's this web application is doing. So as you can see, the security of the digital lab is of the three types low, medium and high. So we will see that how we can bypass all these type of security levels in this video. So what I'm going to try to do, I will use some type of separator as I already demonstrated into the introduction of this command injection vulnerability video. So I will try to use this as a separator and after that I will use command as ls for the listing the directories. So I will just click on it and you can see, wow, it's amazing. So as you can see, this is the pinging to the IP address and after that it's displaying the all type of inputs. So if any web application is vulnerable to the command injection, you can see where their file is located, which type of files they are using, where their upload folder, maybe they are having any sensitive files. So you can access those files without the permission of the website owner. So that's how the command injection vulnerability can be dangerous. So let's try to change the DVW security as the medium and we will try to execute the same command here. So I will type down 127 0.0.1 and after that separator and after that I will type same command here. So if I will try to execute this command, let's see what is the output is going to be. As you can see, this is just filtering out our given input. So this web application is shown, maybe not vulnerable to the command injection, but by seeing the source code of this web application, we are going to bypass this using some of the different techniques. So let's click on the compare so you can compare the all the security level of low high and the medium of this command injection so just click on the compare so you can see this is the low command security this is the medium command and this is the high security here so let's check out the low code as we already seen and this is the source code of the medium command execution security so let's check out what exactly which type of filtering out they are just doing so as you can see, they are just removing those character and end, double end and the semicolon here. As they are using blacklist approach, they are removing only two those characters. So even we can, we are having other characters also. So we will try to bypass the security using other external characters. So what I'm going to do as we have seen the code here and these are using the blacklist approach to block out all these type of characters. So if user will give input of these specific character, this web application will be filter, filter the result. And after that, he will be just maybe block that search or not give any type of output. So that's exactly this medium security is doing. So I will just try out, as you can see, we are having other operator also. So even right now, these end end, and the semicolon is currently blocked here. But I was also having this pipe operator. So I'm just going to use this pipe operator to filter out the result. So I will give the same IP address as the 127 localhost 127.0.0.1. And after that, I will use separator as the pipe here. And I will give command as ls. So let's copy it and click on submit. Wow, 
amazing so currently it's executing because as you seen this is the only filter outing these to a special character here but we use pipe here so we can successfully able to bypass this security level so most of the time what you have to do if any web application you are just trying to find out command is vulnerability or any vulnerability just check out the source code of that website like this type of approach that code he is using or this type of characters or input they are just using to blacklist so let's go to high code here and if you are just i will change the security to the high and if i execute the same command here i don't know it's going to execute it's not going to execute so it's saving that you have entered an invalid ip address so as we are not giving the correct ip address because we are adding this command also so it's not working fine so let's check out the code this type of approach they are using in this so at exactly they are using split the ip address into four octet so if if the user is submitting any type of ip address here they are just splitting that ip address into the four octet here and along with they are checking that if ip address is an integer or it's not integer so if if the ip address is integer then they are putting that ip address or those integers together so first of all they are just splitting those ip address into four octet and after they are just checking out that those ip address is just integer and after they are just combining those i those integers so that's exactly in this approach they are doing so as if you use any type of other symbol also so this is also going to be count so as you can see this is not the ip address here so they are giving this error that you have entered a invalid ip address so let's see code here and after that entering that target they will combine here and after combining they will do the ping and as you can see they are doing the ping for three time only and after that they will be show the result user echo command so this type of techniques we can use to just bypass this filter so let's check out so just i'm going to do as you can see we are we use this approach also so we will try out with the different character holes here so if i will just try for the ping only here and giving the ip address at 10.1 and you can see one here the result is successful executing but if you are adding any type of any external character here the result is not showing so i will try to add the pipe here along with and i will not give any type of space on the input here so i will do ls here and click on the submit so even it's giving the error here so i will try out using the other operators maybe i will use double and after that ls so if i click on the submit it's not going to happen if i use 127.0.0.1 and after that i will use and end operator and print fucking directory here if i will click on the submit so it's not going to giving the any type of result so it seems like that this web application is secure than other web application because it's exactly taking the result as four ip at ip address and just is splitting out and after they're checking this all result is the integer and if the result is integer then it's just combining those ip address and printing the so that's how you can able to find that any website is vulnerable to command injection or it's not so you have to find any type of input box that is running some of the other commands maybe they are using ping or maybe they are they are doing any type of ns lookup or any other way in which they are using their computer system or the system cell or the cmd to execute that input so if that website is using you can try out all this type of actions all this type of filters to just check out that this website is vulnerable or it's not and even that is vulnerable what you can do how you can play with this website we are going to explain in the next video so in the next video we are going to learn how we can exploit command injection vulnerability what 
the play we can do, how we can play with the Commander Six Sigma Liberty. Hi, my name is Gautam Kumawat and welcome to this video. In this we are going to explain the Sender Policy Framework that is also called as SPF. Sender Policy Framework is used to fight against spam. As more time passes, this protocol will be used as one of the standard method of fighting spam on the internet. As SPF record is txt record that is part of a domain DNS join file. The txt record specify a list of authorized host names or IP address that mail can originate from a given domain name. Once this entry is placed within the DNS zone, no further configuration is necessary to take advantage of servers that incorporate SPF checking into their anti-spam system. The SPF record is added by the same way as regular A record, MX record or C name record added. How exactly it's work? If the sender is sending any type of email to the receiver, before going to receiver, it will check for the SPF record in the DNS server. So if there is SPF record is listed out there, it will check for the validation. And if the validation is successful, it will go delivered into your inbox. But if there is no SPF record or the validation fail the policy, it will be rejected. So that's how it's work. So let's take an example. Right now, I got an email from the admin address GIPL.in. So let's check out GIPL.in website. And when you open this website, you will see it's exactly website designing website. So when I search for the some keyword like as GIPL, as you can see, there are many subdomains. So if I open up this first domain name, if I open up the second domain name and check out the third domain name. So there is you can see that there is a CMS campus management system and the other tons of stuff out there on the subdomain. So how I can take the advantage of it. So what I did, I send it the email using the GIPL.in to my email ID saying that hi Gotham, send your fees on this account. So you can imagine if someone is from the university is emailing to the user that you can pay your money on this account and of course the student will pay account, pay the money on that account. So anyone can be able to successfully do any type of fraud if the SPF is not added into the records. So if you, the user see, will see this message, he will be just show that this is email from the admin at that GIPL.in. But what is the basic scenario behind it? So if you want to know, just click out here. So you can get a little bit more information about it that this email from the admin at the GIPL.in and it's send it to the gotham.kumau.kkb at the gmail.com and it's asking that to send money on this is account. So what I'm going to do just I will just click on the show the full header here. So I will click on the show originals. And after that, I will check out that where from this email is generated. So I will go and check out that this is basically the original email. So when you can download it and use any type of open source website to check it out, but I'm just going to do it manually. So I will just read out the code here and let's check out this if I found any type of external details. Wow, perfect. So as you can see, this email is not exactly from the admin at the GIPL.in. I received this email from the mkia.cz. So I will just try to open up this IP address here and let's check it out that where from this IP address is just currently belonging belonging. So when I check this website and you will see that is basically the fake mailer. 
wow so if anyone can send email using this fake mailer using the admin at the zipl domain name so that's how it works so in next video we are going to check how we can check for the spf vulnerability or the spf record that is implemented on any website or not thank you so much for watching this video have a great awesome day so let's check out how to check for the spf so there are two website i mentioned kitterman and the mx toolbox so just go to this website and check out for any website so as you can see our target website is zfsumm.gipl.in so for that website i am just going to check out that if they are having any spf record or not so i will just copy this website name and go to spf query here and after that i will put the domain name and click on the get spf record if any so let's check out and you can see no valid spf record found so this website is vulnerable to spf vulnerability so let's check out for the other website also like as take is facebook.com so i will check out for the facebook.com and of course they will have spf record you can see here they are having spf record here so this is the basically spf record out there even if you check for the microsoft here microsoft.com even they will have spf record so maybe if any website or their subdomain is not having spf record so you have to find out that specify subdomain so even this website is also having spf record so let's go to our old website that was the basically this one so i will just copy it out and even i will go to this mxtoolbox.com website i will put the domain name here and after that here you can see a tons of option are given so i will select for the spf record lookup select it and click here so it will take little bit time as it's showing that there is no spf record is founded here so that's how you can use this tool website to just check out that if their website is vulnerable to spf record or it's not so let's do some little bit tricky part or the demonstration here how anyone can just use it for their own purpose so i will go to any type of anonymous email website anonymous email or probably what happened like some of the website is not currently working because you in this website as you see that these are from option and these are for the only the premium user so i I'm not going to use this website as it's asking for the some money so let's go for the mkia.cz so you can use this website to send out the email as you can see i did using this website and i will check for the spf record but i unable to find out the spf record with this specify website so what i did using the anonymous email i just check out send this email to the this email id and as you can see that i send like a send your fees on access account and after that when i send this email it was looking like this email so as you can see that this is from the admin at the gipl.com.in sorry and this was right in high gotham send your fees on this this account number so that's how you can see how any type of attacker can take advantage of this spf record vulnerability here so let's check out how much bug bounty any guy got from spf account here spf record so i will just search for the hacker one spf bounty and if you see this see this reported out there you will see that if someone is re reported this type of vulnerability how much amount he got wow amazing 
So as you can see on the website mysofify.com, one of this guy score PPY got five hundred dollar amount by just disclosing this vulnerability. So there is nothing even you can imagine any kid even can do that. So for any website, if you are just penetrating or just testing testing for the vulnerability, don't forget to check for the SPF record. And don't miss this amount of bounty. So thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next lecture. Hello, welcome to Cross Site Request for the Retake. My name is Gautam Kumawat and I am your instructor in this course. CSRF is an attack that forces an end user to execute unwanted actions on web application in which they are currently authenticated. CSRF attack specify target state changing request, not theft of data, since the attacker has no way to see the response to the false request. With the little bit help of the social engineering, such as sending link via email or Facebook or chat, an attacker may trick the user to web application into executing action of the attacker choosing. If the victim is a normal user, a successful CSRF attack can force the user to perform state changing requests like as transferring the funds, changing their email address and tons of other stuff. If the victim is an administrative account, CSRF can compromise the entire web application. So let's deep dive into cross-site request forgery. It is also called as XSRF. In this, a attacker is able to trick a victim into making a request the victim did not intend to make. Therefore, with the CSRF, an attacker abused the trusted web application has with victim browser. During a cross-site request forgery attack, a victim is tricked into sending a HTTP request to the web application as intended by the attacker. Normally, such a request would involve submitting the forms present on the web application to alter some of the data. So how exactly it works? In the red, you can see this is the attacker. And the attacker embedded the request into a hyperlink and sent out that link to the website visitor. It may be via any type of social engineering like as email, social media website or via any chat. Visitor is the authenticate user of that website and he already logged in into that website. When the visitor click on the link, it will send out a request to the web server. And that request is containing the malicious code. It may be of transferring fund, changing password, changing email or any type of data. So when the victim will click on that link, the request is successfully executed and it will complete that action that the victim wanted to. So how we can prevent CSRF vulnerability? Either the developer should use anti-CSRF token that is also called as nonce maybe any type of random characters. The session should automatically expire after a suitable amount of time. The anti-CSRF token should be cryptographically random value of significant length. The anti-CSRF token should be cryptographically secure that is generated by a pseudo random number generation algorithm. The anti-CSRF token is added as a hidden field of the form and even the server should reject the request action if the anti-CSRF token failed validation. So let's do the practical demonstration and find out how we can search for the CSRF vulnerability in any website. Hi, my name is Gautam Kumawat and I am your instructor during this course. In this video, we are going to do the practical demonstration of CSRF vulnerability. So I don't hack always a website, but
but when I do, it's cross site request forgery. So let's get started. So here we go. This is the, our currently vulnerable machine is currently running here. As you can see here, here it is. So this is the IP address. So let's open it up and I will go to the DVWA. Just try to log in into DVWA using our default password as username and admin and the password as password and click on the login here. So you can see we successful login into this web application and the DVW security level is currently low because your website is vulnerable to the cross site request forgery. So I will just click on it and check out which type of func functionality the web page is having. So I will check out the view page source here and just read out this code. So as I already told you, if you want to get started with the bug hunting, you should know some little bit basic of the web application programming language. So you can understand the code, you can do the little bit change on the code and get the desired result. So as you can see in this code, this is asking for the new password and it's not asking for the any type of old password. So even you can change the code out here, it's not asking for the old password, it's asking for the new password and just confirm this password and the user can change the password without knowing the old password. So we are going to take the benefit of this functionality and we will try to change the password of the victim without any information. So let's do some changes here. I will try to change the password to the one, two, three, and I'll just click on the change. So see what's, what's going to be in this URL. So when you click on the change, as you can see, this is the password is currently changed. And this password is also going in the URL also. So they are using the get request even. This is also bad practice to show your password in the URL. So what I will do, I will just try to log in with the one, two, three. And as you can see, I will just log out. So I will just copy this URL and paste out here or even don't want to copy, just take it easy. So I'll just log out. And if I log in with the admin and password, I will enable to log in because I changed to password as one, two, three. So if I use one, two, three, I can successfully able to this, this lab. So let's try to hack the user and change the password of this DVWA. So what I will do, I will just change the password to the password and confirm as password and I will do the click on the change. So I will click to the view page source and I'm just going to see that which form it is using to change the password. So it's using this this form so i will copy this form and paste out this form in any text editor so here we go just make a new file and paste out here so i will use command plus to make the size of this form large so i can do the little bit change change over here so as you can see, this is method they are using get, but they should not use get method to, you know, change the password. And even this is showing, so this is the bad practice. I will remove it out. And I want to show a little bit trick part. So the user is getting the trick and he will just try to click on any button. So as you can see, like a lot of people are just curious to get fucking money without paying any penny. So I will just get give a H1 tag here that click on below button to get how much your dollar. So let's see five hundred dollar and I will close this H1 tag. And even this is the type is equal to password here. So as you can see that if any user will type password as one two three or anything, it's got converted into the password here. So I will make it this field as hidden. I don't want to show it anymore. Make it hidden. And along with, I want to add a new value here. So I want to give the value. And the value I want to give is the password I want to change. 
so let's give it as a Gotham and same value I want to give in this confirm password field so I will go here and I will give the value as a Gotham make sure this value you should give the same value because if you not confirm your password it's not going to change so give the same value here and the type is already hidden here one more thing I'm just going to change is just delete this line breaking option here so if anything is asking because I don't want to show all these type of things because if the user will see that there is a confirm new password field he will not click on the button anymore so I will just remove this line breaking field here and even you can keep keep it and even also you can remove this field or over here so let's check out anything we have to done here so one more thing we left out with we want to do any type of action however over here so when the user will open this form where he will redirect which type of action he will take on which url he will take so as we already here so i will just copy this you can see when you entered the password here as a password so i will copy this field that on this field we are going to do the changes so i will just paste here and remove this hash sign after that i will paste the the path here so this is the s1 tag and this is the input type hidden autocomplete of name this is the name is equal to this is the value i'm giving name type is equal to hidden name is equal to this one value is equal to gotham here and everything seems perfect so what i'm going to do i'm just going to save this file as get money dot html and i will just try out to send this file use extension as the html and i will just check out it you can see here it is got saved so i will just close this close this file let's see if anything is i had to change hey nothing everything is seems like perfectly working so i will just close it out and i will try i will try to send out this file to the victim using any email any social media or any chat bar so i will send this file to the victim saying hey just click on this link click on this html file and when you click on this link you will get 500 dollar without paying any single penny it's free you are getting this money in the free giveaway so when the user will get this get html file what he will do he will just open it up and check out hey what's inside this file so take the example that that user or you can say your victim is currently open this file and he will just click on the change here so i will just refresh it by click on the csr as you can see nothing is appearing in the url and when when you click on the change here see the password is now got changed to the gotham here so that's how you can trick a user to change your password so if even you can check out by click on the when the user will log out and he will just log in using their already given password see he is unable to use because right now the you are having the actual password of that user that is the gotham here so when the user will log in using the gotham he will be successfully logged in so as you will got the password you will got the password you only know the password user is not aware that which which type of password he changed by just clicking on the link so that's how this attacker this attack work and as you can assume like which type of tons of thing you can do using this attack you can transfer money to your account you can change the email address of your victim you can change the settings of your victim and you can do other tons of stuff if that website is vulnerable to cross site request forgery so hope you understand this attack why this attack is happening i will tell you that right now this is the page and even this one is also page i will just try to open open this up so right now this security level is low so take example that the security of this website is currently high so this website will be have anti csrf token so as we made a page using some html code so whenever user will click on this 
change button here and the security of this web page is high. So when the user will click on the change button, this web page is not having NTCSF token that is the same as this page. So the server will get to know this, the request made from any type of external page is not actually made from the actual user. So they will deny the request. But as in this case, as the security is low, so this page is not having any NTCSRF token and even this page is not having any type of NTCSRF token. So if the request will be get made, it will be just server will accept the request and change the successful password. So that's how it works. So as I already given some of the tips, how you can, if you're a developer, how you can stay away from this cross site request forgery vulnerability by implementing some of the NTCSF token, nonce or any type of random values. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you are having any type of problem, just feel free to ask. Have a great awesome day.